Hi there, welcome back to my shop. Now, I haven't been well enough to work on this for quite a while, but I'm hoping over the next few days to be able to accomplish something here. This is the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt laser engraver. And they sent me the 40 watt module and the pieces that I need to put it together with. Quite a while ago, I've been trying to get around to it and that's what I'm gonna to try to do now. Well, when I shot that video, I was assuming that I was feeling pretty good and I would stay that way. But chemotherapy has a way of just kind of coming in when it wants to and crash landed on me the next day. So instead of being a few days ago, that was three months ago. And I'm sorry about that. In the meantime, I've decided after watching some YouTube videos myself, that there are plenty of videos out there showing how to convert the D1 Pro from 20 watt to 40 watt. So I'm not gonna bother with that. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna shoot some video of the D1 Pro with the 20 watt module doing some work, and then I'm going to use the 40 watt after I change it and do exactly the same things. So I'll be back, but I don't know when. <laughs> All right, the first thing I want to do is bring in a rectangle. I'll hold the shift key down so I get a perfect square. And I want this to be 100 millimeters square. I have the aspect ratio locked here, so that will do that. The next thing I want to do is bring in a shape. I think I will use this one. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio and I'm going to make this 95 millimeters by 95 millimeters. Now that might be too big. Let's take a look here. When you see the blue line horizontal and vertical, that means that it's in the center. All right, you can see it going from left to right and from bottom to top. All right, so I'm going to set the square to 100% power. This is going to be a cut, seven millimeters per second and I'm going to do two passes on that. This little frame in here, I'm going to do that at 60% power and 60 millimeters per second. So that takes care of that. Now I have to go to my browser, open a new window, and go to Q, better learn to type here, qifi.org. I'm going to put my Wi-Fi in there, my code. And I'm going to generate the QR code. I will right click on that and copy that image. And now I will go back to my software and I'm going to paste that in here. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna make that and engrave again at 60 by 60 and I'm going to size this at 80 by 80. Too large, let's go down to 70. All right, once again we'll look for that blue horizontal line in the center and the blue line vertical. 
All right, that should be just fine. I think I'll actually make that a little smaller. I'm going to leave that at 70, actually. And I'm going to hit the Arrange key here and bring it to the front. And now let's try framing this and just see where it's going to end up. I think I'll move this to 12 by 15. Now we'll frame it. And I just need to hit this little button to do the framing. And that looks good. Now I need to process this. All right, I'm just going to group all this so it if I do move anything, I'll move all of it. All right, going to process. And it, as you can see, it's going to take 41 minutes to do this. So let's frame one more time. And we'll hit start. Hit the button and we'll start it. Well, as usual, I forgot to turn on the air assist. So there will be some scorching that didn't need to be there, but that should sand off fairly easily. And that'll drop right under there. And that looks pretty darn good. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a light sanding. And I'll be right back. And that actually came off pretty darn good. I'm very happy with that. Now I'm going to grab my phone and see if it's going to recognize that QR code. There you go, all ready to join my network. Since I already did a engraved test on a slate tile, I thought I would do the Wi-Fi code on a slate tile as well, and we'll see how that works out. I am doing this at 60% power and 100 millimeters per second All right, let's get going.
All right. That looks like it did a pretty good job to me. So I'm going to go and clean this off. I'll use a microfiber cloth and wash it off and then I'll use compressed air to blow it dry and I'll be back and we'll see if this is going to work. All right, it's looking pretty good. There's a couple of wet spots on there, but I don't think that's a big deal. I got my phone ready and let's see what happens here. And it looks like it's inviting me to join the Wi-Fi network. It's exactly what we wanted. I am very pleased with how these turned out, both on the slate and on the wood. And now I'm going to change the module to the 40 watt. And of course, I'll have to do the test grids again because they're going to change a lot, I assume, with twice the power. So I'm going to do that and then I will be back. Hang in there. Hi there, welcome back. All right, I did the 40 watt tests. And the first thing you always want to do with a new laser engraver or a new module or something you're unfamiliar with is a material test card. Now this was the 20 watt and uh, you might be able to see that the holes went right through right from 30% power at 2 millimeters per second all the way across and these are also all the way through. Now I did a 40 watt on the same type of wood with the same exact values and the holes went through right from here all the way up to here. They were just totally <laughs> decimated. It was amazing. And of course, I can't find the cards I did the 40 watt with. The engraved can't find the cut. I don't know where they went. All I can find, in fact, are the two slates that I did. Now this is the 20 watt, and you can hopefully see what it looks like. And this is the 40 watt. And if you look at the bottom row, you can see it's basically just made a real mess of that, burning it that well. So the lesson here is that 40 watt obviously is going to cut a lot more efficiently than the 20 watt. And in fact, if you're thinking of getting a laser engraver and you're going to do a lot of cutting, then the 40 watt may be the way to go. If you're going to do a lot of engraving, however, you might want the 20 watt. The 20 watt has a much finer beam, so it can do much more intricate and fine engravings. But that's just something you have to make a decision on. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. I hope this was educational, maybe a little bit entertaining, who knows. But I hope you'll come back and join me next time. Between now and then, have a great day in your shop and be safe. Bye-bye now.